Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Rogue Seas by Mighty Paladin Games. This is a one to four player board game for ages 10 and up. It takes about 20 minutes per player to play the game. And in the game, you're gonna be playing as one of history's most notorious pirates, William Kidd and Bonnie, Sir Henry Morgan, Samuel Bellamy, uh, Francisco, Illinois, uh, and more, Blackbeard, etc., etc. You'll choose one of these pirates, you'll take a ship, and then you're going to get equipped, and you'll set off, and you will set sail. And your objective is to go around the map and upgrade your ship, defeat merchants and each other, to get through the whirlpool to the center. Once you have a number of treasures and hit that center of the area of the game board, you win the game. We'll talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin play, decide how many players you are playing with. And if you're playing this solo mode, there are specific solo mode cards for these characters here and for the events. If you're not playing solo, you can simply remove these cards from the game. You will not be utilizing them. Take the main game board out, place it within reach of all players. Then take each merchant ship and place one merchant ship on each of the number ones and each of their hexes here. Each player playing the game is going to get a colored boat, and you'll get to select what port you want to place your boat into in turn order. Each player is also going to be getting a player board. This is basically their boat, whether it be Adventure Gallery or Royal Fortune, etc., etc. You take one of these boats, set your dials to the starting dial, which is going to be the blue die, and then your health will set to um, 10 to start with. So you'll rotate this little thing to 10. After which, you're then going to go ahead and take your boat's color of cubes and select a character. Whatever character you want to select is fine. Uh, they're going to give you a unique benefit that's going to last you throughout the entire game. Like, for instance, Anne Bonnie is going to give you four cargo and an extra plus one you gain on gold. Each player is also going to start with a treasure map. This is what you need in order to get to the middle of the game board. Once you reach the spot and you have five treasures, you can win the game. Uh, and of course your cubes are going to be set aside so that you can utilize them. Some will be used for the islands on the board, some is going to be used to dictate how much cargo you have and how much HP you have. Um, additionally, other players might receive uh, other types of currency that they'll get for their character cards. That's pretty much it for how the setup for your main game board goes. Along the outskirts of the board, you're going to be having merchant cards, treasure cards, and treasure map cards. These you obtain from various ways throughout the game. There's also four unique monsters that you can fight in the game. The Flying Dutchman, the Megalodon, the uh, Kraken, and the Leviathan. These are on the board. They represent how much HP they have, and this board also represents what they fight with and what you get if you beat them. Then you're going to have upgrade cards. These are cards that are going to allow you to upgrade your ship. You'll simply shuffle the deck and deal out six within reach of all players. There's a merchant chart that details how many rounds in play there are. They're going to start at round one, turn one, and you'll be moving along this uh, track here as you go from turn to turn as these boats will move and reset and new events will pop up. Speaking of events, shuffle the event deck and place it next to that merchant board. You can take the gold and infamy and place them in stacks and spaces in which you can reach by reach to all players. Take the dice that you'll be utilizing for combat and movement and place them within reach of all players. And the monster HP tracker, set it at zero, and eventually you'll be using this throughout the game. The last thing you need is truce tokens. Those are going to go somewhere next to the main merchant board so you can use when you need to set a truce with other pirates. Remember though, truths never last. Anyway, that's the basic idea for the setup of the game. Let's talk about how to play. Rogue Seas is played in turns, phases, and rounds. On a player's turn, they're going to basically take their die, roll it, move to a location, and take an action. After each player has done that, then each player's turn is over, so it'll move to the next phase. When a phase goes from one to the next, the ships, the merchant ships, are going to move from that number that they are on to the number that the, the phase is going to, which is either one, two, or three. After three phases have taken place, basically you're going to have the end of round, which is where you're going to basically draw a special event card and see what it does. This will last for the next full round of play. And you're going to refresh and replace all merchant ships back to one, whether they're off the board from being defeated or at the number three. 
and you'll rinse and repeat going from round to round to round until somebody makes it to the middle of the game board. They have to get past the whirlpool, which can also increase in value as rounds progress, uh, while defeating ships, which also increase in HP as rounds progress, uh, moving along and progressing in a way which um, improves your ship, uh, upgrades your cannons, your movement, and eventually leads you to the treasure island with the treasure that you need to win the game. So let's talk about the different actions that you can take. Action one is obviously after you move. So in this case, you're always gonna start with a blue die for movement. You'll move with your die, you roll, it's gonna be a one, two, or a three. And as you upgrade, there'll be higher values. And then with that movement, you can move to spaces. The first space that you can go to is a port, which is where you start. Port is going to allow you to spend uh, gold to upgrade your ship or infamy to upgrade your characters on your ship. Uh, when you upgrade your ship, you can either upgrade your weapons or your navigation, which is your movement, or you can upgrade your HP. If you want to go from a blue die to a yellow, it'll cost you two coins. A yellow to a red will be four, and red to black will be eight. Health is from one to the next one coin up until it starts costing you two. Max health you can have is 20. Uh, the cost of infamy on the different characters you can get on your boat is going to be on the middle right hand side. It will tell you the color of the card, which means you can only ever have one color of a specific card. Um, and the cost of infamy and what you get in this case, this sailor here, or sailmaker, is going to give you one navigation, aka plus one to your movement, at a cost of four infamy. You can never have a new blue card unless you choose to upgrade by paying the difference or discarding this and replacing it with a new one. So never two blue cards. And the same is said for green, yellow, red, and so on and so forth. Whenever you purchase cards at the end of the round, you're going to be, or end of the phase, you're going to be flipping over a new one so that players can then purchase them as the game progresses. But uh, after you have purchased and made upgrades from the port here, you are then going to refresh your HP, either at its base stat, which is 10, or whatever you've upgraded it to. So it's a way in which you're always going to be able to come back here and repair your ship. Another action that you can take is you can go to an island. Going to an island will let you draw a treasure chest that will give you infamy and gold. And it's always a random uh, allotment, whether I think it's like between five and seven of either three gold and four infamy, et cetera, et cetera. You'll take these uh, cards, you'll play them, discard them, gain the value, and then place one of your markers on the island. Well, why do you do that? Because for each island you visit, you'll place a marker. And once you visited every single island on the map here, you are going to remove them gain treasure, and that is what you need to get to the middle of the game board. Uh, another thing you can choose to do is you can choose to fight a merchant ship. As each round progresses, merchant ships get more challenging to fight. Fighting in this game is very simple. You check to see what your damage or weapons uh, upgraded die is, you roll the die, compare that to the merchant's HP, and if you do more damage than the merchant's health, uh, allocated health, you defeat the merchant. If you don't, you subtract it, and then the merchant attacks back with their attack die. And you go back and forth until somebody gets sunk. If you defeat the merchant, which in most cases you will for quite some time, you are going to get the sim similar thing to a treasure card, a merchant card. These cards will give you infamy and gold, and after you collect enough of them, you can turn them in and gain treasure. Uh, the next thing you can choose to do is fight somebody else's ship. This is a battle to the death, and players will go back and forth, starting with the attacking player, rolling a die, adding up all the bonuses, subtracting any negatives that might occur. So if I roll my die and I get a three and I have a plus one to attack, but my opponent has a one defense, I am going to then do a three damage to my opponent. My opponent has 14 health, they will go to 11 and then they will roll. And you just go back and forth. If somebody gets sunk, you'll remove them from the game board. They'll come back the next round or next phase, placing it on one of the ports of their choosing. That's a secret. Uh, and you are going to get one treasure from them, all their gold, and a number of infamy. The last thing that you can do as far as actions are concerned is you can go ahead and visit a monster. Monsters are going to tell you how much HP they have on their card here, how much attack die, or what attack die they use, and what rewards you get if you defeat them. You're either going to defeat the monster and get a ton of rewards, including a treasure, or you are going to sink and be having to replace yourself somewhere on one of the ports later in the game. Monsters can be utilizing these little monster trackers here. In fact, whenever you do a battle with anybody, you can have somebody choose to be the defending player, whether it's the AI or the specific boat that you're fighting against, to dictate uh, who rolls what die. 
And that's it. That's how you progress throughout the game. Roll the die to move, move to a location, perform the action. If there's no action, you just simply pass, trying to get, I believe it's five treasure. And actually it, it can increase with difficulty. So you're gonna need a number of treasures, get to the middle of the game board. And as you progress through the game board, and if you land on any of the spaces that have a negative marker on them, you'll take that much damage, which is why you need to have at least 15 HP to get to the middle here and successfully have the treasure and win the game. If you wait too long though, the game will trigger an ending on its own. And of course it gets more challenging as the game progresses in Rogue Seas. All right, what do I think about it? Rogue Seas is a pirating, high adventure fantasy game in which you take part in playing as one of the historical pirates from um, back in the day, the actual pirates that did exist. And in fact, if you've seen Black Sails, which is a great show, this actually has most of the characters from that show. Roll a die, move your ship, go to a location, perform the action. You'll either be fighting other merchants, fighting other players, dealing with historical monsters from the deep, or going and gathering treasure from islands, or dealing with the ports and having to trade for better resources or higher upgrades, newer crew members, and utilizing them to progress your pirating adventure. Um, this game is, the, the stakes are high and, and, and speed is, is needed, but luckily it's not extremely punishing. If you're out of the game, you'll just simply come back, you'll lose your gold and a treasure, and you need treasure in order to progress to the middle of the island, right? I believe there's five, but you can increase the amount of treasure that you need to get to the middle if you want to make, make a longer game or a more challenging game. And there's a variety of ways to get treasure. You can get them from defeating monsters, going to each of the islands, basically using your navigational abilities to hit each of the islands really quickly and gathering the treasure that way, or uh, defeating enough merchant ships will also give you treasure. And so you kind of get to choose how you want to deal with that, all at the same time having to potentially deal with other pirates in the game that can simply come over defeats you instantly and take a treasure. So you can be accosted quite simply. Uh, but there's another way in this game that I didn't talk about that can happen uh, that's called little truces here. Truces last for about a round from wherever you start with. And how that works is instead of, so I come up to you and I, I land on your ship and I wanna fight you and you're like, sir, Pardon, please. And I'm like, okay, what are you gonna give me? And so you can trade resources and valuables in order to prevent yourself from not having to do a fight. In which case, you'll place a truce on the uh, phase in that round in which you are now in truce for. And you cannot actually, or uh, it should be the next phase in the next round. So if, it's, uh, if, if I'm in phase one of round two, it'll be phase one of round three. So we can't fight each other up until the end of that next phase and round. So it's a way of kind of protecting yourself and giving hopefully less than you would if you were to lose. Now, the pirating comes with a little bit of luck as to how you hit the ship and where it, where the cannonballs land. So you might actually defeat a much more di difficult foe, right? But there is the, the case that if that ship is just much like it's a higher upgraded, better built, better upgrades, you're going to lose. Even there is enough mitigation, even with die rolling in this game, or if your ship is a big boy, you're definitely going to win. And so sometimes a truce or a parlay is the best way to go. This is a pirating game through and through. You're doing all the things that you would think a pirate would do, plus a little extra, like fighting a megalodon. Although that's... That is something you, I guess, would imagine that a pirate would do if the, they did exist, I suppose. Um, dealing with merchant ships and other players, there's this like tenuous truce that you see around, and then all of a sudden that the game ends, everybody's out for blood, everyone's attacking everybody to try and get to that treasure island in the center of the game board. The quality of art is beautiful. I love the style of art. I love the monster art. It looks great. It feels piratey. I feel like a pirate. The theme comes in great with this game. It's simple enough where I can teach pretty much anybody, roll a die, move, take the action on the space you go on, and it progressively gets more interesting with unique events, upgrading your ship with different abilities and powers along the way and dealing with monsters and literally other players, which is the most dangerous threat on the field. The quality of the game, this is a prototype, obviously. Um, and with a prototype, there is going to be some changes to note. Um, you should look at the campaign to see what they are, but I'm gonna guess that probably these dice will be changed. Uh, as far as the quality of tokens and cards go, they're actually really nice. And even the player boards and main game board is nice as well. Like this is pretty close to something I would expect to see fully published from a company. And it's really, really nice. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this game. 
Uh, there's a few qualms, I guess. One is it starts to become a bit of a tug of war at the end of the game where players are just simply trying to fight each other for that last treasure. Normally what happens are if somebody's far behind, their objective might not be to win, it might be to play Kingmaker, which can be a thing people like to do or not like to do in games like these. And another thing that's about this game, which is actually a good thing, is it's really tight, it's really close. Usually everybody's within one treasure from each other. And so that those last final moments as these, uh, as people start kind of collapsing into the middle, people start making plans that can change the game. And in fact, they do. Just when you think you've won the game, something happens in one round that changes everything and now somebody else can win. Overall, it's high quality, high flying, fun pirating adventure, all on the high seas. In fact, the rogue seas. I really, really enjoyed this game. If you like pirating games, this is one I would strongly suggest you take a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Rogue Seas. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up this title. Also, if you'd like, we have a Sunday night live stream, 6.30 p.m. PST. We do a whatnot stream on Wednesdays, and if you're feeling charitable, maybe you should consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more videos just like this one. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. As always, I look forward to sailing the high seas, the rogue seas, with you next time.